So if you've been following my channel, you know I've been reading a lot of George R. R. Martin's other works lately, and a lot of his work is pretty weird and pretty shocking. What's kind of interesting and kind of fantastic is I've never come across a fan theory that was more screwed up or more crazy than George R. R. Martin's actual writing. Though Euron being the dusky woman kind of comes close. So I've read about 90% of George R. R. Martin's work, and I even watched Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, the whole series. Don't judge me. It's on Netflix. And so I have the top five most shocking things that I found in this other work. And I have some honorable mentions as well. But I'm about to spoil about ten different George R. R. Martin stories for you, so beware. So here are some honorable mentions. Our author has a story called Sand Kings, where a guy's pets get loose and try to kill him. To distract the pets, he calls up his friends to get eaten by them. Nice guy. He also has a story called Remembering Melody. In this story, a bunch of ex-hippies are getting driven to suicide by a ghost. Why? Because these ex-hippies had vowed to be friends forever and sealed that pact with an orgy. He also has a story called Unsound Variations. In this story, a Doran Martell type of villain keeps going into the past, Groundhog's Day style, in order to get revenge on his friends. He tries to ruin them professionally, romantically, and tries to give them herpes, all because they made him feel bad after losing a chess tournament in college. He also has a story called In the House of the Worm, where a religious leader has his arms, legs, genitalia, and eyes removed, all to look more like a worm. Now keep in mind this horrid thought has nothing to do with the plot. It's just there to gross us out. Now this honorable mention isn't that gross, but is very telling about our author. In the wildcard story Winter's Chill, a character finds out that he can't have children with his true love because they'll have birth defects. But there's a problem with this. There's already a story in this universe where a different character with the same condition did successfully have a child. So how was that possible? The character subconsciously used telekinesis to manipulate the germ plasma in his partner's uterus. Phew, plot hole closed. But let's move on to the things that really made me say, George R. R. Martin, you so crazy. Number five is the ending of Dying of the Light. Dying of the Light is a story where our protagonist goes to find his ex-girlfriend, who is now in a three-way relationship with two men. It should be noted that George R. R. Martin has a lot of relationship stories that should be entitled Getting Dumped Sucks Because Your Ex Still Wants the Positive Affirmation From You and Wants to Fuck Other People and Cruelly Uses the Guise of Friendship as an Excuse to Maintain Relations. And you really need to move on. Seriously. Seriously. But fuck. You do the friendship thing because you secretly want them back. And fuck. Our author has quite a few stories about this because he was dating a sci-fi writer named Lisa Tuttle who left him for his best friend. But they all had to stay friends, and so our author had to learn to live with a lot of pain. Of course, the number of instances of unrequited love and love triangles in Ice and Fire is astounding. But back to Dying of the Light. Our characters accidentally insult House Bolton of Space, and the Space Boltons start hunting our main characters. In the end, our protagonist decides to face one of the Boltons in an honor fight. And you know who wins? Well, actually, we don't know. The story ends right before the fight. That's right, our author spends 300 pages building up to a fight and then ends the story before it. And yes, I get that the most important point was that he chose to fight and proved himself the better man, but still. Number four is the ending of Meat House Man. Meat House Man takes place in a dystopian universe where human trafficking is shockingly common. Slaves' brains are removed and replaced with computers, and then overseers can control the bodies with telepathy. Our main character is an overseer of construction corpses. The story begins with him and his friends going to a whorehouse to have sex with corpses. He has some really rockin' sex with the whore corpse and wonders who is telepathically controlling her. His friends laugh at him and tell him it was him controlling her with his subconscious mind. This creeps out our protagonist, so he decides to get off whore corpses and only goes out with real women. But of course, getting dumped sucks because your ex still wants... and on and on. After getting his heart broken too many times, he decides to date a corpse whore. I mean, I get the metaphor. Intelligent women can be challenging and difficult. And in many ways, it's easier to date a bimbo that you can control. But Christ, necrophilia masturbation? Number three is the ending of And Seven Times Never Kill Man. And Seven Times Never Kill Man is essentially the story of the followers of R'hllor fighting the children of the forest. A religious group called the Steel Angels tries to take a planet from a woodland race called the Jainshi. The Jainshi have inferior weapons, but they fight back by sending the Steel Angels false visions. It is primarily this story that has convinced me that all prophecy in A Song of Ice and Fire is false. The final vision that the Jainshi send the Steel Angels tells the Steel Angels to burn all of their food stocks and kill their children and the children are killed in the worst way possible. They're hung from the walls of the settlement and slowly starved to death over the course of days. That's right, a death that's worse than the burning of Shireen. 
No character is safe from our author, no matter how innocent. Number two is Jokerton Shuffle. Jokerton Shuffle is the ninth book in the Wildcard series. Wild Cards is an anthology series where our author brought together various sci-fi writers to write about superheroes. Although our author didn't write any stories in Jokerton Shuffle, he was the editor and needed to coordinate various plot points. So I placed the ultimate blame for Lovers by Melinda Snodgrass with our author. So our author loves to write stories about telepathic control, skin changing, and Freaky Friday switches. Several books in the Wild Cards series deal with the villainous jumpers who can take over people's bodies. It's in this story that our protagonist, Dr. Tachyon, swaps bodies with a 16-year-old girl. And then he's raped by his grandson and impregnated and eventually gives birth to his grandson's rape baby. Yes, that book really exists out there and I read it. For you guys. You're welcome. But the craziest thing our author has ever written is Nightflyer's murder mystery reveal. Nightflyer's kind of starts out the same way as the movie Event Horizon. It's a ten little Indian horror story in space. Our characters are stuck on a spaceship and start dying off one by one. Who could the murderer be? In the end we find out the killer is somebody's cross-gender clone mother. You see the mother was a ship captain and she created a cross-gender clone in order to have sex with it. Yeah, I bet you didn't think there was something grosser than twincest. Anyway, she died leaving the clone who is one of the protagonists. Anyway, it's not really the mother that's killing everyone, but she downloaded her mind into a computer crystal. And with that download, her telekinetic ability endured. So the killer is a computer program of a character's cross-gender mother clone using telekinesis. If anyone ever tells you that you're a Song of Ice and Fire theory is too crazy, tell them to read Night Flyers. Anyway, that's all the craziness for now. Your favorite theory videos are coming soon, don't worry. Thanks for watching.